Hey, moron! Hey, moron! No! no, no look at me! I'm the woo water boy, dude! Well, good Saturday morning, friends. Mark Holmes here, of course, with my buddy Cowboy Joe Wu. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching commenting subscribing and being part of the joe boo sports report without you guys as well as you ladies you know that this literally does not work hope everybody's having a great day man we're getting closer we are getting so much closer to the beginning of training camp it's the weekend guys it's saturday a week from tuesday the dallas cowboys start heading to Oxnard to begin their quest for 2024. We got all kinds of things facing against us. Nobody, and I mean nobody, in the last 20 years has repeated as NFC East champions since the Philadelphia Eagles did 2002, 2003, and 2004. And that means teams that have been to the Super Bowl and lost, Eagles, and teams that have been to the Super Bowl and won, Giants and Eagles, Nobody, and I mean nobody, has repeated. The spotlight on the Cowboys is non-existent. They, everybody looks and says the Cowboys didn't do anything to help themselves, which is literally deja vu. We never do anything else extra other than the draft, free agency, USFL, UFL. That's it. That's the list. And, of course, some bottom-tier free agents. We have talked at nauseum about the players that are coming back from injury, from Diggs to Overshone, Overshone Agent Zero, um, as well as everybody else that's been injured. We've talked about the contracts of Micah Parsons and Dak and CD and whether or not they're going to be coming back. We've talked about the coaches, the difference between Mike Zimmer, of course, versus Dan Quinn, and of course, Mike McCarthy. That guy should be fired and should have been fired long ago. How dare he have three seasons in a row with 12 wins without winning the Super Bowl? We've talked about Dak Prescott. Boy, have we talked about Dak Prescott from his legal situation, the lawsuit that was against him, and so on, about whether or not he is a top 15 quarterback. Now, of course, some people are saying that he is the top quarterback in the NFC. Whether or not the Cowboys should re-sign him, should they move on, should they pay that guy? We've talked about all that. But this morning, I'm going to take a little bit of a breather here this morning. Uh, from that because you know eagle fans will say keep uh, keep us out your mouth while they're constantly here with the cowboys in their mouth the thing is is you must know your enemy you must know them you're gonna have to play them twice a year they're gonna be a roadblock just like we're a roadblock for them and the thing that i find that's interesting here as we talk about the philadelphia eagles and i'm sure i will get a whole lot of grief here, you know, in the same way that uh, an Eagles uh, Twitter guy posted out there that Jalen Hurts is better than Dak Prescott because since his time starting in the NFL games, he's got 36 wins to Dak Prescott's 32. But admitting, admitting that Jalen Hurts played more games because Dak Prescott was injured, just kind of conveniently left that off the list. Be that as it may, <clears throat> you can prove anything you want with statistics. It's amazing to me that the Eagles, which were thought to be a Super Bowl team, they'll tell you, well, we still won 11 games. How is it the Cowboys that did nothing? How is it the Cowboys that did nothing, the same thing we're doing this year, wins the division and they're a disgrace, but the Eagles, who were predicted to be back in the Super Bowl, considered the best team, sneak by some of those wins for those 11 wins, and then proceeded to fall off a cliff. But now they're still considered the favorites to win the division with not one but two different coordinators. The big piece that people have is, well, they got Saquon Barkley. Saquon, oh my God. Well, I, I will let you know that Saquon Barkley has never had a victory against the Dallas Cowboys. He has never been on the winning side in nine contests. 
fearing Saquon is not something I think that the Dallas Cowboys are doing. But people will say, oh, my God, they got Saquon. And I'm going to actually say that maybe the Saquon um, hype is not what we see with Saquon now, but what you've seen in the past. I know the Giants have been terrible on offense. Their offensive line is ass. Their quarterback, Daniel Jones, stinks and all that. But I'm just looking at the numbers for Saquon. And arguably, you could say 22 was the best season that he had, which was a playoff year for them. He had 1,312 yards, 4.4 yards per carry, third highest of his career. He ended up having uh, rushing TDs, rushing TDs, 10 TDs. It was a great season. Last year, not quite so much. 962 yards, 3.9 yard average, second worst in his career. Um, so the thing is, here's my thought. And, you know, of course, y- y- y'all can kill me, Eagle fans. You can kill me. But here's my question to you. So let's say you do get Saquon from 2022 who did have 1,312 yards and averaged 4.4 yards per carry. That's great. That's incredible. But unlike the Cowboys, when we look at, say, our running back situation where we ended up having Tony Pollard, who was not playing that well, he was not an inside-the-tackles running guy, you're not doing a major upgrade. I know people argue and say, are you kidding me? Saquon is one of the best in the business. Yeah, but you know what's kind of interesting is DeAndre Swift wasn't chump change last year. DeAndre Swift had 1,049 yards. That's 100 yards more than Saquon had last year, be it he was on a better team. DeAndre Swift had 4.6 yards per carry last year to Saquon's 3.9. Again, he was on a better team that could spread the ball around. But my question is, is how much more of a bump do you actually think that you get with Saquon Barkley? Even if we take Saquon from 2022, you're only talking about an additional 250 yards of rushing. The Eagles last year were eighth running the football. Eighth best at running the football. They had over 2,000 yards rushing. So are you going to turn into the Saquon Barkley show? Now, the problem with Saquon is by the end of the season, his numbers start to plummet. Usually he has boner games. You know, the first couple, the first week of the season, it's like, oh, my God, this is going to be Hall of, you know, a, a MVP season. But by the end of the year, he's usually not anywhere close to where he started. So my question is, and this is what I say, when I say bring that up to Eagle fans, that Saquon has a tendency to wear down by the end of the season. They say, well, we're not going to use him that much. Well, if you're not going to use him that much, then the bump that you're looking to get from him is not going to be that strong. So if you're not using him very much, then that says... You're going to be, you know, maybe like DeAndre Swift was. DeAndre Swift had 229 carries, um, 214 yards receiving. He was 15, uh, excuse me, uh, 1,300 yards. If you're not going to use him, then do you really think that you're going to get more production from the running back position? And that's the thing that I look at and I say, I don't know that you're getting that much. Is he a better back than DeAndre Swift? Sure. But Swift was younger and didn't tail off. Barkley, injury history, and I'm not wishing injuries on anybody, but I'm not sure that it's going to be the big thing that everybody thinks because people will think and remember some of those great big runs that he's had, the highlights and stuff. I'm not sure that those highlights are going to be as much as people think. 
And, you know, you would think the way people are talking that he's going to rush for, you know, 1,500 yards and, you know, he's going to change the narrative on the team. The Eagles have had really good running games before Saquon. Before DeAndre Swift, Miles Sanders was a 1,000-yard running back. So what are we expecting from them? You tell me. With that being said, um, I want to listen to the talking heads talking about how good Saquon's going to make them. Boys will make the NFC title game. I would not believe that. I think this Cowboys team is a lesser team than in 2023. They have to replace multiple starters on, on the offensive line. Who is their number two wide receiver? Great question. I mean, that, that to me is like the, the biggest question. We know CeeDee Lamb is a superstar, but outside of CeeDee Lamb, they don't really have any other offensive you know, weapons that really threaten you. Watch Brandon Cooks. You think they, they, they can win the division? Would you believe that? Um, I got Philadelphia winning the NFC. All right. Bonus, would you believe? Uh, oh, would I've you got believe Jaden Daniels will win Offensive Rookie of the Year? You know what? I actually can believe that. I, I have skinny. questions about the Washington Commanders' offensive line. I think that's going to be an issue. But make no mistake about it. Jaden Daniels has weapons in Washington. He has guys that he can throw the ball to. I felt like he was the best the best quarterback coming out uh, this past year. So it would not be out of the realm of the uh, of possibility of Jaden Daniels hmm. getting that done. Would you believe Jalen Hurts will have his best season under new offensive coordinator Kellen Moore? I would believe that. Listen, we know that the one thing that really bothered Jalen Hurts was he didn't really have the answers to the test as it related to the blitz. He had a terrible year against the blitz. Teams really came after him. I, I think that Kellen Moore is going to get him more answers to the test. And then, oh, by the way, you know that guy, Saquon Barkley? I've heard of him. He plays for the Philadelphia Eagles now. He's going to be a huge help uh, for, for Jalen Hurts and his Philadelphia Eagles offense. Yeah, and you talk about that, Jeff Darlington. Yesterday on the show, we had the Saquon Barkley conversation with Joe Shane when he was told, like, hey, you can go test the market, but promises yeah. you'll come back. Yeah. And then he goes and signs a deal with the Eagles. Is, is this somebody who covers this league as an insider? What did you make of that whole exchange and the fact that the Giants really just let him walk? Yeah, I mean, that was a fascinating exchange. And, and listen, it's always a little bit awkward and maybe cringeworthy to ultimately basically hear a breakup mm -hmm. uh, in public. It was kind of a, a strange feeling, but I will say this about the Giants. We'll find out because Joe Shane just wasn't believing that the market was bearing that type of a price for a running back. And, and the Eagles seem to be one of the few teams to be willing to do that. Now, the proof will be in the pudding because these teams are in the division together, which makes this all the more fascinating. And we do will. have a leader like Saquon Barkley who could be really utilized in an Eagles locker room that needs better camaraderie, that needs better leadership, that needs to find the mojo that they lacked last year during the meltdown. So while it felt like he didn't necessarily have his place within the Giants anymore, sure. he definitely has more than one role to play with the Eagles this coming season. Hey, Harry, you had heard Damien Woody say that he believes that under Kellen Moore, he could have Jalen his best career, yeah, career year. Okay. But with Saquon, how much does Saquon benefit Jalen Hurts now having one of the top flight running backs in the league. Man, I think a lot. Um, you look at a guy like Saquon Barkley, he can be that dynamic rusher that you want, but also an extension of your pass game. And we all know the wide receiver that yeah. he can be. When you look at the Christian McCaffrey's, you look at the B. John Robinson's uh, of the NFL, you put Saquon Barkley in that category as well. But I think when it comes to the Eagles offensively, Jalen Hurts, number one, has to be healthy. He's going to be healthy coming into the season. He wasn't mm -hmm. last season. But also what's, I think, pivotal for their success is being able to defeat the Blitz. In 2022, and Woody, you brought this up, Shane Steichen meant a lot to Jalen Hurts. He had 10 touchdowns to two interceptions. Last year, that was five touchdowns to eight interceptions. And I thought it was uh, imperative that we that with that change in Jalen Hurts in this offensive system, we seen in a playoff game, Ty Bowles versus the Tampa Bay Buccaneers say, you know what? We're going to all out blitz the Philadelphia Eagles because we know they don't have the answer to the test. They've shown that on tape all season long. And that's how they left the football season in 2023. That's exactly right. You know, when you, Jalen Hurts got blitzed more than what we call cover zero, all out blitz, than any quarterback in the National Football League. Which, in my opinion, like, <laughs> that, that's, that's, that's a no that's, that's, that's disrespectful. That's disrespectful. When you, when, a a really quarterback is. of the caliber of Jalen Hurts getting blitzed that high. Yeah. It just tells you what the state of the Philadelphia Eagles offense was last year. That's I think exactly that's why right. Kellen Moore was brought in to give Jalen Hurts more, more answers to the test mm -hmm. and then complement with, with Saquon Barkley being there as well, sure. give him more outlets 
in the passing game, especially in those critical situations. So it sounds like, at least for the Philadelphia Eagles' purposes, a year after making it to the Super Bowl, we'll put this all in the coordinators. You bring back in coordinators, and are hopefully that makes the difference between what they were at Good the end of the year and what that. they were the year before. But that defense better be better. No, because that defense was atrocious last year. There's a lot that has to change in Philadelphia with how they finished. Jonathan, we'll go back to the NFL in a minute, but first, college football. <laughs> Media days. All right, there you have it. So, for me, I got questions. You know, and it's what's funny is um, I remember this past week talking with Dan Salio um, about, the, uh, about Dak Prescott and saying that Dak Prescott doesn't help anybody, doesn't improve anybody. But here's I, – I've got my own little theory on that one because – this is one of those ones where you wonder, was it Kellen Moore that made Dak really good? Or was it Dak that made Kellen Moore really good? We're going to find out. We're going to find out, and I'm going to have some evidence to back that, this theory up. And I'll bring that to you guys a little bit later. As always, I appreciate you guys and hope you all have a great day. We're going to keep doing what we do, which is surviving. Peace out.